This video is made possible by North Naperville Autos. If you're looking for a quality used car in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos is here to help. Browse their inventory at NorthNaperVilleAutos.com and drive home in a new vehicle today. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2004 Lincoln Navigator. Up front is a 5.4 liter V8. Down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Lincoln Navigator because when I was a kid, my dad knew a wealthy investor. And when he made it big, he bought his entire family each their own Navigator. And it was this body style. That was actually back in 2005. So I never got to drive those cars. And they ended up all being repoed when the market crashed. But it's time to find out if I was oogling and ogling over the right car or the wrong car. But before we get on with the rest of the video, if you are interested in helping out the channel, there's a bunch of awesome links in the description below. One is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor, would not work on this car, but it will pair to your smart device and help you diagnose issues in your vehicles 1996 and up. There is con plates, which is a suction cup license plate mount, or cash for cars if you're looking to sell your vehicle. Huge thank you to all of our sponsors and every purchase helps out the channel, but let's get on with the video. So let's get back to that 5.4 liter V8. It makes about 300 horsepower power which isn't too bad 5.4 is actually technically a triton motor although in the early stages of the navigator it was advertised as an intech motor it's essentially the same thing as the triton 5.4 that you'll find in an f-150 it's fine however these do have the same spark plug issues that all other tritons have which is these use two-piece spark plugs and so if they're not changed semi-regularly, they heat cycle so much that they get brittle and that bottom piece of the spark plug goes down into the cylinder. So something to note if you're planning on working on an older Navigator or F-150 for that matter. All right, 5.4 liter. It's fine, it feels a lot like a truck motor. I wonder why. It is a truck motor. <laughs> so it, it's nothing too crazy. 300 horsepower is definitely there, but kind of got to dig for it a little bit. Like I said, Paradu, it is an automatic and it's fine. It shifts fine. Nothing really too crazy. Last but not least, the Navigator is four wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. On the left is my tachometer. In the center is my speedometer. On the right, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. One thing I really like about these gauges is how seamless they are. You can't really see the background of the gauges. They look like they're somewhat floating. And the reason I point that out is because I've driven the brand new Navigator and that's still the case. They make the gauges look like they're sort of floating which is really interesting. To the right of the gauges, I do have info setup reset and my traction control off button. And down below that, I have my four wheel drive setting. So I have two high, automatic four wheel drive, four high and four low. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control settings as well as media. This will switch the source. And then on the right, I have my fan speed, temperature and volume. This needs to make a comeback. I love climate controls on the steering wheel. I think it's such a smart idea. I absolutely love it. The steering wheel itself looks nice. It has the wood up at the top and it has the Lincoln logo in the center, but nothing too, too crazy. To the left of me, I have my headlight switches, gauge dimmer switch, and my pedal adjustments. So like most Fords, you can bring the pedals closer or further away from you if you'd like. On the door, I have my power mirror switches, my memory seats, lock and unlock, and I do have my button for power folding the mirrors. The Navigator does have power folding mirrors which is great if you're gonna be parking in a city or any tight situation. However, I don't have my window switches over here. Kind of interesting. Moving into the center, I have two climate control vents and a very nice Lincoln analog clock. I love the look of this. I've said this before, any car with an analog clock just appears a lot more classy to me. Then I have the radio, which is covered up by a sort of hidden panel to make it a more sleek look. However, what really bothers me is the fact that they put Navigator all the way down at the bottom and not up in the center. Why? Because when you put it up, 
It's not like you can see the word navigator. So there's no... Center it. Why is it not centered? I don't know. It's very frustrating. But once you do open it, the radio's behind it. Now, this is not the factory radio. It has since been changed out, but that is where the factory radio would be. Down below the radio are my climate controls. Nothing really too crazy here. I do have dual zone and auto climate, which is very nice for 2004. And then I have a pop-out ashtray and cigarette lighter 12-volt outlet. Moving on to the center console itself, the shifter looks fine. It definitely looks dated at this point, but you have to remember that this car is 18 years old, so not the end of the world. And when everything is closed, it does have a nice sleek look, but it really bothers me that Navigator is down low. I feel like it should be up higher, but maybe I'm wrong. To the right of that shifter, I do have some cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Lincoln Navigator, and unfortunately it fails. I would like to see a bigger SUV like this, a bigger luxury car, I feel like should accommodate the big friggin' bottle, but alas, it does not. Then we get to the center console, which has a bunch of interesting switches. First of all, we have the heated and air-conditioned seats. Now, that's an important distinction, AC. A lot of cars have ventilated seats, which means it just blows whatever regular air, but this actually has refrigerant in it, which is very interesting and unique. And then I have my window switches in the center, another interesting and unique feature that I don't really like. I don't know why they had to put the switches down here. There seems to be no major benefit to having the switches in the center, but that's where Ford decided to put it. Then I do get a center console, which has an interestingly shaped lid. Now we got to talk about the seats. The seats are pretty comfortable. They are heated, cooled, power, memory, anything you'd really want out of a luxury car from this era, but they're not super memorable besides that. They've got nice features but that's about it. Speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2004 Lincoln Navigator. Couple interesting things back here. First of all, I have my own center console, which looks like a nearly mirrored image of the front center console. Kind of interesting there. I do have two cup holders here. Headroom, good. Legroom, good. You're gonna be comfortable back here. What is also interesting, the two more cup holders down below, some rear climate controls like fan speed, temperature, where to send it, things like that. But I also have an input for an aux jack. So I can actually listen to just the radio from back here with my headphones on. And I guess that sort of rids the driver of any music. And I can seek and memory mode, things like that. Very, very interesting. I do also have a third row here in the Navigator. But we'll talk about that when we talk about the cargo space. So let's hop around the back. All right, so we're around the back of the Lincoln Navigator. It is a power back, but over the years, it has seemed to have kind of given up. When we are back here, we can fold up the rear seats by a power switch right here. Not the fastest thing in the world anymore, but very, very nice that back in 2004, it had these features. I raved about the 2018 having this feature, and yet it was here 18 years ago, which is very, very nice. I do have a 12 volt outlet down here as well, and I get a little, wait for it to go down. There we go. I have this little guy. I can open up a little compartment there. Oh, okay. Say, can also flip this up and there's a jack and leather cream conditioner back there. So that's great. But anyway, tons of space back here, but once these back seats are folded up, it is going to be at its pretty much limits for cargo room. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I love the look of this generation of Navigator because I have such strong nostalgia with it. Anytime I saw one of these as a kid, I thought of that investor that I knew, and I was like, wow, that guy's rich, so whoever's driving that Navigator they gotta be rich. And so I always grew up thinking that this was a rich person's car, that this was a successful person's car, just based off those looks. But now let's get into my final thoughts. I'm kind of disappointed by this Navigator, not gonna lie. I think there were just some things that were sort of not really thought all the way through, like that lettering placement of the center console. I don't know why the window switches are in the center. It just seems like here in the interior, there were just some afterthoughts and it's not really that powerful. The driving experience didn't really wow me. I'm comfortable, but not as comfortable as I would be in a Cadillac. And so like other vehicles in Ford's lineup, this car is purely fueled by nostalgia for me. I will still be excited when I see these cars. I'll still think back on my childhood growing up 
around these things or at least lusting after them. I don't think it's a don't meet your hero scenario because I kind of had lower expectations to begin with. But honestly, for vehicles in this segment, this day and age, I would highly seek out an Escalade. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their Navigator. They have tons of used cars on their lot at all times. Tons of great, great, great cars that they have. And they are absolutely awesome to work with. They offer financing, they're Carfax certified, and whatever you want, they will fit you into the right car. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.